house of the Lord. It's so great to be back at Trinity. I've spent a lot of time at Trinity over the years. And uh, for 11 years, I was on staff, privileged to be on staff. And for 10 years, I was associate pastor and heard Pastor Steve preach thousands of sermons and a great and awesome man of God. And I learned so much from Pastor Steve. And Sister Lisa is so gracious and loving. And it was just wonderful being here and serving all of those years. And uh, finally, we decided to retire, but we ended up evangelizing. And, and since then, we go to a lot of different churches, ministering the Word of God, mostly teaching on end times, because that's something the Lord's really led me to teach on. But we love Trinity. Trinity is very special to us and all of the people here. And it's uh, wonderful to see um, Pastor Freddie Riggs and Becky from Bardstown, and so many other friends are here, and um, it's a wonderful church to praise the Lord. Now, if you're watching Facebook Live, and you've been home for a long time, and you're praying about a good church to go to, I recommend you check out Trinity World Outreach Center. As soon as you get here, you will feel the love of God. And if you haven't been here for a long time, come back to church. It's great to watch online. We love to watch online, many services. But there's nothing like being in person with the people of God. Of course, the Lord said that in the last days, we should not forsake assembling together, and even more so as the day approaches because of our need to encourage one another and pray together. Amen? Amen? So thank God the church is opening back up again. And uh, I just thank Pastor Steve for the opportunity to, to minister today. I'm humbled by it. I really am. And he's such a great preacher. And uh, Pastor Ken and all the other ministers here and Pastor Johnny, um, awesome men and women of God in this church. So I want to say a quick prayer before I start, okay? Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to minister the word of God. I claim the power of the blood of Jesus over every single person in here. Father God, I thank you that our minds are open to hear the word of God and receive the word of God. Lord, I pray it's not one bit my word, that it's all your word. And, Father, I pray the people will be blessed and encouraged. And, Father God, that you will be lifted up and glorified. We give you the honor and we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, in preparation for this uh, meeting and this revival, I thought I should listen to Pastor Steve's last two sermons. We were here the Sunday before that. It was great to hear him in person. But the last two weeks, we had to be somewhere else. But I listened to his sermons. And on, on Palm Sunday, it was all about the cross and, and what a powerful message that was. And then last week on Resurrection Sunday, of course, it was about the resurrection and, and how God raised up Jesus and, and the power and the life of the Holy Spirit. And, and it, that was another powerful and encouraging word. And as I prayed about... Uh, what what I should bring, it just seemed illogical that I should just take it on to the next step. And the next step was there was the cross and there was resurrection. But after the resurrection, there was a Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, uh, we some of us feel like we've been in a grave for a long, long time, and we're tired of being in the grave, and we're try tired of being cooped up, and a lot of things have happened to us. And uh, we, we feel like we're starting to have a resurrection. The doors are opening up and, and, and things are beginning to, to look um, uh, positive again for the people of God to get out and worship and do what God's called them to do. But just like in the days of old, the only way that we're going to be successful, the only way we're going to, to get the job done for the Lord is to be filled and refilled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You know, just to start out here, we know the story so well. 
After the resurrection, of course, the disciples were thrilled to see Jesus. And then for 40 glorious, wonderful days, he walked with them and he talked with them in his glorified state. What it must have been like to be with him, the Son of God, resurrected from the dead and, and, and spending 40 days with him, learning and experiencing the very presence of the Lord. And he was preparing them for the, the days that would be ahead, strengthening them. And then at the end of 40 days, he, he took them to the Mount of Olives where so many things happen in the Bible and will happen in the future. He took them to the Mount of Olives and, and he, he prayed over them and ministered over them again. And then before their eyes, he just was ascended into heaven after 40 days in a cloud. And, and, and they were uh, amazed at what they were seeing and they were were staring up into heaven and and their Jesus had gone to heaven and it was it must have been just something just hard to comprehend and as they were gazing up into heaven two angels appeared to them and said why are you staring up into heaven like that as you have seen the Lord go up into heaven one day he's coming back again in the same manner he's going to come back again and you know when he comes back again, it's going to be a different story. He's going to put every enemy under his feet. Every enemy under his feet. And he is going to rule and reign with the saints here on earth forever and ever and ever. Amen. So he told the disciples, you go back to Jerusalem and pray for the promise of the Father. So they obeyed him and they went back to Jerusalem and went to the upper room. And they began to pray and to cry out to God. They had a 10-day prayer meeting. 10 days they cried out to God. And as I was rereading the scripture, I thought, I wonder what would happen, church, if we all just stopped everything else we were doing and came to the house of God, turn off the TV, turn off the phones, turn off all the other stuff, and just cried out to God, we need a move of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> we need something to change. We need something to change. We need you, Lord, like we've never needed you before. Amen. Well, they cried out to God, men and women, 120 of them. God, we need you. We need you. We need you. They had been persecuted, and they had been vexed by their own people, but they were crying out to God. And you know the story so well. It's one of my favorite stories in the Bible. <laughs> While they were praying early in the morning, all 120 disciples, men and women, all of a sudden they heard the sound of a rushing mighty wind. All of a sudden they heard the sound of a rushing mighty wind. <laughs> All oh, the world thought it was over for those followers of Christ. They thought they had defeated them. The devil thought he had destroyed them, that they would never amount to anything. But when the Holy Ghost showed up, when the Holy Ghost showed up, when the Holy Ghost showed up, hallelujah, everything began to change. And the sound of the rushing mighty wind came bursting into that room in a blaze of fire and a tongue on every head. I like that, a tongue on every head, because every one of us has a unique call of God on our life. Every one of us has unique giftings and talents and ways that God wants to use us. We're all different, but we're all one as the body of Christ. But the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they began to speak in other tongues and praise and worship God. And I think it's so cool. The disciples who were afraid 50 days before when the crucifixion happened, the disciples who ran away and hid, the disciples who denied Christ, and they, they, they were shaking in their boots. All of a sudden, they didn't care who heard them. It was Pentecost, and Jews had come from all over Israel for, to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. Thousands of Jews were in Jerusalem for the feast. 
And these disciples got full of the Holy Ghost and they begin to shout and they begin to pray in all these different languages and they begin to praise the Lord and they were loud and rowdy. Hallelujah. You know, we don't have to be loud and rowdy when we're filled with the Holy Spirit and do a work for the Lord. But sometimes we can be loud and rowdy, and it's okay. Amen. <laughs> and they were so loud that people began to gather in the streets to see what was going on. And they thought that the disciples must be drunk. But the, Peter went out, the one who denied Christ, went out boldly all of a sudden. See, when the Holy Ghost came upon him, he became a changed man. The fear turned into faith. The timidity turned into boldness. All of a sudden, he had a confidence he never had before. All of a sudden, he could explain the scriptures like he never could before. All of a sudden, he couldn't wait to proclaim the good news of the gospel. He had an anointing he'd never had before. He had a power to preach that he never had before. He had a mighty call of God on his life and he didn't care who knew it oh what a difference the Holy Spirit makes hallelujah and you know he preached the gospel to all of those Jews now you know it's not easy to win a Jewish person to Jesus Christ have you ever tried to do that but the Bible says he, after he finished preaching his first sermon that 3,000 Jews were baptized and accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. <laughs> well, I just wanted to start out that way. But the name of my message is... <laughs> just priming the pump, Pastor Kenny. But I'll stay within my time limit, Lord willing. The name of this message is Upside Down. So after the disciples were filled with the Holy Ghost, they went out and they began to preach and they began to cast out devils and they healed the sick, did mighty works for God. And the Bible says the church grew daily. And, and the gospel began to go out in Judea and Samaria and all of the world. And, and people were just so excited about what the Lord was doing. Amen. And it went on. And then Paul, who had persecuted Christians, he was uh, saved and baptized in the Holy Ghost. So I want to go to um, Acts, the 17th chapter. For a few minutes. So Paul hooked up with Silas and they began to travel. They went to uh, a lot of the area we call Turkey now. Established churches, trained leaders, uh, did the mighty works of God. And when they would get a church established, they would go somewhere else. So in chapter 17 of Acts, Paul and Silas decided to go to Thessalonica. And they went to Thessalonica, and they went into the synagogue and preached, as was their custom. And as usual, most of the Jews would not receive their message, but some of them did. And Paul and Silas continued to preach, and God was doing mighty works in their midst. And we see here in uh, verse 5, chapter 17, verse 5, But the Jews, who were not persuaded, became envious took some of the evil men from the marketplace and gathering a mob set all the city in an uproar and attacked the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some brethren to the rulers of the city, crying out, these who have turned the whole world upside down. I really like that. You get somebody with the Holy Ghost, and they're going to turn everything upside down. I read where a great lady of God said one time, Elizabeth Elliot, the wife of a missionary, as a matter of fact, you take one person who's baptized in the Holy Ghost and knows who they are in Jesus Christ, they get more done for God than 1,000 lukewarm Christians who are just sitting on the pew and won't do anything for the Lord, content with who, where they are and who they are. Listen, we live in a time where the earth is rocking and reeling 
from the powers of darkness. We live in a time when people don't know where to go and they don't know what to do. We live in a time when people are feared, filled with fear and anxiety and stress. And the enemy's going about as a roaring lion, taking advantage of the situation and seeking whom he may devour. We live in a time when the portals of hell have been opened and every despicable demon you can think of has been loosed on mankind to try to destroy man who was made in the image and the likeness of God, who was made to do exploits for God, who was made to rule and reign on the earth. And, it, and if there ever was a time when we need a revival, if there ever was a time when we need to be filled with the Holy Ghost, if there ever was a time when we need to pull ourselves up by the bootstraps and to be strong for Lord, the Lord, it is now. A lot of people wanting to quit. A lot of people don't know what to do. They've been serving God, but all of a sudden they're in a place where they don't know where to go and they don't know what to do. But God is saying, you can't quit now. You can't sit down now. You can't give up now. You can't um, get distracted now. Now is the time when you have to build yourself up in the, in the word of God, when you have to pray like you've never prayed before, and when you have to answer the call of God on your life. Because so many people will die and go to hell if we don't do what God has called us to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. The devil tried to turn the world upside down for the disciples when they were doing such a mighty work for God. He tried to turn everything upside down for Paul and Silas and everybody who tried to do anything for the Lord. But I love Psalms 146, 8 and 9. It says, The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He relieves the fatherless and the widows. But the way of the wicked, he turns upside down. <laughs> the way of the wicked, he turns upside down. Listen, we're not to be afraid of the devil and what's going on in the world today. We're not to be afraid no matter what is let loose. Because Christians washed in the blood and filled with the Holy Spirit of the living God have power over serpents and scorpions and all the power of the devil. And nothing can by any means hurt us. We are the ones with the power. We are the ones who have the blood in the name of Jesus and have been chosen by God to rise up in these last days and, and proclaim the gospel with great power and authority from God. Amen. Maybe your world has been turned upside down as an individual. Maybe somebody here is really discouraged today. You're mixed up today. You're depressed today. You don't know what to do today. You're in a place where you don't know what to do next. Maybe you're in a position where, where you feel condemned or over some mistakes you've made in the past. I don't know. But the Lord is saying to you today, <laughs> fasten your eyes on Jesus. Fasten your eyes on Jesus. Don't look at the things going on in the world around you. If you have sinned and done wrong, confess it. He forgives it and casts it into a sea of forgetfulness and doesn't remember it anymore and won't hold it against your account. Just don't sin anymore, bless God. You fasten your eyes on Jesus and let him rise you up. And you will be like those disciples uh, on the day of Pentecost who, who had had come to the place where they thought that they would maybe be killed and they didn't know what to do. But one visit from Jesus, one visit from the Holy Ghost changed everything. And that's what God wants to do for you today. No matter what it is you're going through, stay focused on Jesus. We can get so distracted by what's going on in the world. We can get so distracted by a lot of heresy going on and false teaching in the world right now. 
keep centered in the Word of God. Don't go after new and strange teachings. Don't go after new and strange revelations. I'm telling you, I've, I'm seeing heresy like I've never seen heresy before. Even try to get into the church. But you won't go wrong if you stay in the Word of God. You won't go wrong if you read the Word of God more than following after every conspiracy theory and following after every voice that's trying to say this, that, and the other. Read the Word of God. Stay close to Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit to keep you full, and you won't make the wrong decision. You will go out in a blaze of glory when God's through with you. Amen. I can say it. I know it. I've been saved over 50 years been through hell and high water, good times, bad times, everything you can possibly think of. And I'm here to tell you, young people say, what can somebody older tell me? I'll tell you what I'll tell you. <laughs> God is faithful. He's faithful. No matter what you go through, if you keep your hand in his hand, he'll bring you out. He will rebuke the devourer for your sake. He will defeat the enemy for your sake. He will raise you up for his purposes in these last days. No matter how beaten down you are, God has a plan for your life. And with every time you have left, use it for him with all you've got within you. And don't give him 10%. Don't give him 75% give him all of you and watch what he will do with your life. Thank God for Jesus and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> well, two days ago was the 115th anniversary of the great Azusa Street Revival. Everybody's heard about that. There was a humble African-American man in Los Angeles. He was a son of slaves and was blind in one eye. He didn't have much but a great love for God. And even though he didn't have much to offer in the eyes of the world, he just wanted more of God is all he wanted. And he began to meet with his friends, and they began to pray. And they didn't pray that God would give them more. They prayed that they could just know God better know God more, experience God more. They just wanted more of God. And, and they prayed with all of their hearts. And to make a long story really short, if I can, one day they were praying, and, and the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues wasn't preached in churches then. It was around the beginning of the 1900s. And, and they hadn't had anybody teach them about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They'd only read about it in the Word of God. And all of a sudden, one night while they were praying, a man was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And he began to speak in other tongues, and they'd never heard anything like that before. And then a couple hours later, there was a woman there. She was sitting on a stool. And all of a sudden, she was baptized in the Holy Ghost. And she began to pray in other tongues. She prayed in six different languages. They were all interpreted in English. And then all of a sudden, a woman who'd never sat down in front of a piano, a woman who had never sang in front of people, she felt led by the Spirit of God to walk over to the piano. And she sat down to the piano, and she began to play amazingly well, beautifully, and began to worship God. And it wasn't long till they were all baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I want to tell you, God still does that now. I know a woman. <laughs> Come on, Elaine, you know about it. I know a woman in this city, sister. I talked to her. She leads praise and worship. She has led praise and worship in big churches. And she's leading praise and worship today. Oh, can she play? Oh, can she sing just like this wonderful team we have here? Can she ever sing the praises down and I talked to her and I said you're so gifted and she said I never had a piano lesson I never had a lesson of any kind one day God called me one day God called me and I sat down in front of the keyboard and he taught me how to play and he taught me how to sing God's a miracle working God 
and all you have to do is say, yes, yes, Lord, whatever your gift is, give it to God and watch what he will do with it. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. They went on and had a powerful, powerful uh, move of the Holy Spirit. Soon, so many people were packing into the house that the front porch caved in. And they had to move somewhere else. They moved to a stable on Azusa Street, used a, an old crate for a podium to preach. But the power of God was so strong, people wanted more of God, began coming. White people, people from all ethnic groups began to come. Um, rich people, poor people, professional people, people from other countries began to come. Now, this is horse and buggy days. People came from everywhere. The greatest revival, well, move of God that we ever have heard of started there in the United States on Azusa Street. That's where the Pentecostal movement in the United States was born. And because of that, the gospel went all over the United States and the many countries around the world. And that humble preacher who just wanted more of God didn't have money, didn't have fame, didn't have the internet, <laughs> didn't have a microphone, but he had a connection with God. He knew God and he knew what the word of God said. And he cried out to God. And because of that man's faithfulness, millions and millions of people have been born again. And we know about the power of the Holy Spirit. And I'm getting ready to close. And I want to read this about him. It says here, um, the early days of the Azusa Street Revival were marked by unity, humility, and love regardless of ethnicity, race, or gender. Seymour emphasized the need to develop the fruit of the Spirit, especially love. In 1908, the leadership at Azusa said, the Pentecostal power, when you sum it all up, is just more of God's love. Love was what was needed for this baptism of the Holy Spirit experience to be sustainable. They realize that love heals, love restores, and love is the way forward. What does it look like to say yes to radical love in a world that's rocking and reeling today? God is calling us. I'm just going to come out and say it. It breaks the heart of God when the church is divided. To me, that's the saddest thing that's happened from this pandemic. Church is being shut down, and it seems like a lot of Christians are pitted against one another because of, of race and other reasons. And it's, it, it's, it's not the will of God for this to happen. We have to stop it somehow. And the only way we can stop it is with the love of Christ. I've said many times in pulpits, speaking for white people, I just think I can be free here. I don't know, but if any of my ancestors ever did anything against, against African-American people, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't do anything about the past, but I can do a lot about right now. I can do a lot about tomorrow. God is calling us to stop hating one another and pitting ourselves against one another. I love this church because it's, it's mixed race, and that's the way it should be. I love that. I get tired of people saying, you can't pray for the church to have unity. Why not? Jesus' last prayer in, in John 17 with his disciples at the Last Supper, he prayed his heart out with his disciples that they may be one, that they may be one, that they may be one. 
that the world will know us by our love for one another. How are we going to win the world when we're fighting each other? I didn't plan on saying that. But it has to stop. If 120 disciples could change the world with the Holy Ghost, what can we in this room do? What can we do? I'll tell you what it takes for a move of God. It takes radical repentance. 60 times in the Bible we're told to repent. Get rid of that bad stuff in your life. It'll hinder you. It takes radical prayer. It takes radical witnessing. It takes radical boldness. It takes radical faith. It takes radical unity, and it takes radical love to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we can do it. I'm going to close with this scripture. Hallelujah. God's going to do it. I know he is. We're going to have a great move of God. The devil can't stop us. He can't. Hallelujah. Daniel 11.32 says, The people who know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Daniel 12.3 says, Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Amen. Let's bow our heads. If there's anyone in here who does not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, You've never said yes to Jesus. Take all of me. I want you, Jesus, to be my Lord and my Savior. I need you, Jesus. If there's anyone in here, anyone listening, you have not asked Jesus into your heart to be your Lord and your Savior. If you're in here, would you just hold up your hand so I can pray for you? I'm not going to call you up or anything. Anybody in here say, I need Jesus. I need Jesus. I see that hand. Thank you for that hand. I remember when I held mine up over 50 years ago. Thank you. You can put your hand down now. Is there anybody in here you'd say, I've been away from the Lord. I feel dead and cold, and I need a a fresh baptism in the Holy Ghost. I need to come alive again. If that's you, hold up your hand to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. Thank you for those hands. Thank you. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for everyone who who raised up a hand today. I thank you for them, Lord. I pray now that you will touch them in a powerful way. Father God, that as they confess you, as they confess Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, as they turn their back on the way they used to live and seek to live for you, as they put their lives in your hands, I pray, Lord, that you would turn their lives around and bless them and raise them up in these last days for your glory. And, Father, for everyone in this church, Lord, everyone in this church, Lord, I pray that you would just fill them and refill them with your Holy Spirit. Set them on fire for you. Set them on fire for you. Set them on fire for you. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We praise you and give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Kenny.